Hi, I'm Liz, and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 40. <laughs> happy Sunday. Um, thank you for joining me for another video all about what I've been up to this week. Mostly cross stitch, a little bit of quilting, and some FFOing. <laughs> um, it's been a busy week. It's been a stressful week at work, not life-wise, just work has been busy. And I'm pretty exhausted this weekend, so you get Pajama Liz and her oversized yet another tie-dye t-shirt. <laughs> Um, I know I've mentioned before my love of tie dye, um, <laughs> which who cares, but, uh, I, so I used to tie dye my own t-shirts, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. I used to love to. And, um, so I used to always wear it and then I kind of dropped off for a little while. And then as it started becoming more popular, I was like, yes, tie dye again. I have an excuse to break out tie dye again. <laughs> Um, but about 10 years ago, gosh, was it really 10 years ago? Yeah, probably, or maybe even 11 years ago. So, um, two of my sisters actually work with me at the company that I work with or work at, and it's a huge company. So it's a little weird that I have family members there, but I love it. And one of my sisters, um, dressed up as me on Halloween, uh, to work <laughs> to the point where like everybody immediately knew that she was dressed as me um and she did that by wearing uh one of my tie well maybe it was hers but a tie-dye t-shirt and a cardigan over it because I used to be a big fan of the t-shirt with a cardigan so it looks like you're kind of dressed up <laughs> our work doesn't have a dress code so <laughs> that was my version t-shirt and a cardigan um and then I used to do this thing with my hair which if you remember like 10 years ago which is where you would like get the center and then you would like kind of bump it a little bit right so you'd get like a little <laughs> anyways so she did that to her hair um I can't remember if she used my name badge or not I don't know it was really funny um all that to say I heart tie-dye and I'm back in my jumbo sweatshirt uh, for today because I'm exhausted and I'm moving slow this morning and I was like, I don't know what I want to wear. Let's just throw on a sweatshirt and sit down and talk about stitching. <laughs> so that's where we're at today. Um, what else do I have to share with you? Oh, I included a couple pictures in my opening of a um, bridal shower I went to yesterday. So my sweet cousin Abby, um, she's getting married in August. And so we had a bridal shower yesterday that um, two of my sisters uh, and her sister hosted, which was so fun. Um, Abby and her sister grew up here in Austin as well. So, um, and her mom and my dad are brother and sister. So we just grew up very tight knit, always hanging out and family functions together because we're all in Austin. Um, and her, um, Abby who's getting married, her and my sister Allison are were born in the same month of the same year. And so they were always um, in the same grade at school and stuff. So um, anyways, they're very tight. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was just really great to see everybody. And um, the venue was gorgeous. And I, uh, I don't know, it was like a first event, you know, I've been to in a year and a couple months now. So it was awesome. Um, we had a really good time, really great food. The weather was like, super cool um like cooler than we had maybe had wanted but like it ended up working out because the venue itself was a little warm so like open the door get the breezes going um it was really nice it was a really nice day so yeah just relaxing today talking to cross stitch no talking about cross stitch to you guys and then i don't know just gonna chill on the couch today with my own cross stitch and I run out of things to say. Should we talk about stitching? Yeah, let's talk about stitching. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dork. Okay, 
First up is an FFO. Um, as part of Stitchy March Madness, uh, the project um, Meow Block Party was my winner. And so I got all of the stitching of this done in March and I just needed to turn it in to this lovely little square pin cushion. And so last night I sat down and did it. And I have a lot of thoughts about on the process. Um, why don't I show it to you first and then we'll discuss. <laughs> I'm just going out of order today. Um, here it is. Oh my gosh. Show you all the sides. And then the top. <laughs> um, yeah. I actually really wish I had like a lazy Susan or something because I would totally like spin this and like slow-mo the video. Um, I feel like one of those like cake shows or like nailed it or something when they like, you know, spin it around to show you <laughs> all sides. Man, maybe I need to look into like a lazy Susan to add to my filming setup, my super professional filming setup. Um, <laughs> anyways, I love it absolutely love it. I feel like Kathy's directions are excellent and super easy to follow and make sense. And I did take a video of me working on this. Like I had my iPad set up with um, her instructions and then the video facing down so you could see like what I was doing. So um, yeah, so I'll include that now. And then when we come back, I'll talk about kind of like my tips and tricks um, and thoughts on putting these together. <laughs> okay, so I've got all of the pieces to my block party. Um, I'm probably gonna give this one more press. Got a little bit wrinkled. And I have on my iPad the instructions from Kathy's blog, Hands On Design. I'll link it um, in the description box below. So. I'm gonna get started and maybe try and film my process, but I am gonna stick pretty exactly to her tutorial. So let's see how it goes.
So tips and tricks for putting this together. First is frogany mistakes. <laughs> so the instructions work um, based on the fact that your top is exactly the same size as your bottom and all four sides of the top and bottom are the exact same length as your full band, um, the big long rectangular piece that you stitch. And so um, being super accurate with the top and the bottom back stitching and the sides is super important because you really want a one-to-one -one relationship with those loops um, that you're whip stitching. Because basically the way this is assembled is you use your back stitching loops to whip stitch your pieces together. And so that process itself is super simple, just super tedious. Like I think it took me about two hours, 15 minutes total to assemble the block. So very like time consuming, I guess. I mean, it's not terrible, but you know, time consuming, but super simple to do. Like as long as everything lines up. Um, there are a couple spots where I um, got slightly off with my um, whip stitches, meaning like I didn't have my back stitches lined up perfectly. All my pieces are the exact same size. I just in one corner, I think, put two stitches into the same loop um, and kind of, cause like by the time I got to my corner seam, um, this is like the last part, um, I was one stitch off. Um, like the band was one stitch short. So you're able to make it work and I think it looks great. Um, it's just, uh, you want to be super slow, methodical, careful about your whip stitches so that everything lines up. And when you get to the end, you know, you're not short or over and trying to bunch stuff up, if that makes sense. Um, let me see, what else do I have? I don't know. I think, I mean, honestly, Kathy's instructions are great. The pictures are really helpful. Um, I had to look up and remind myself how to do the blanket stitch to attach the wool felt, but you know, no big. Um, I just haven't done kind of like surface embroidery in a while. And is blanket stitch even considered surface embroidery? I don't know, but I hadn't done blanket stitch in a while. So I had to remind myself how to do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, this was super simple to put together. Um, so just set yourself, set aside some time for yourself <laughs> to work on this because it does take a little bit of time. So yeah, um, I definitely will be making my uh, reindeer one at some point because I loved making this and I can't wait. This I think is gonna get displayed year round in one of these shelves um, in my sewing room because I love it. <laughs> so anyways, that is my completely finished meow block party. Okay, let's talk about the whips. Um, first up, I'm gonna talk about my Stitchy Stars Sal. Here is the pattern Stitchy Stars by Lori Holt. And um, if you're following along on Instagram, we're using the hashtag Stitchy Stars S-A-L. And I have decided that I'm just gonna do one a week and I'll be done well ahead of my July 4th deadline to get this FFO'd. So I got my second block done this week and I absolutely love the called for colors. I'm using the Weeks Dye Works floss pack that was available at Fat Quarter Shop and um, I'm using a 28 count wheat linen by Zweigert. And yeah, I just absolutely love how cute these are. And so this has been my lunchtime stitch. So I just leave this out on my coffee table in its little project bag. And then as I have time during the workday, like well, lunch basically, um, to kind of pick this up and put some stitches in. And then maybe like in the evening when I finish working um, and I'm still sitting out in the living room, I'll, uh, I'll pick this up and do some more. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. And um, I also love how many other people have joined in to stitch along with us. Um, so I have put together a little slideshow of um, everybody else's progress. So um, I'm going to go ahead and insert that here. So enjoy everybody else's Stitchy Stars progress.
Next up, I worked on a new start, and this is one I showed you last week in my plans, and um, <laughs> it was, oh, I'll have to put a picture up because I didn't print the cover. It's the Believe Freebie by, I've already forgotten the name, I'll put it on the screen. Why can I not? I know her name is Teresa Baird. I can never remember Heart's Ease. I'm not going to try. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> but I started the ruler that I was so excited about. And here is where I'm at. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, those little numbers are over one. I got my three little strawberries in. Um, I got the ruler back stitching done, like the actual number markings. And then all that's left is to finish this B and back stitch the B and then finish up um, my border. So <laughs> I'm a, um, I think this is how this works. I'm, if I'm using these terms wrong, please correct me. But I, um, I think is, and what I've, I can't even get the sentence out. I think I'm a landmark stitcher rather than like a pure counter because what I do and why I have threads hanging on the border is I, you know, I start over here and so I get these borders in and going and then I start building the inside of the piece. And then as I work, I keep extending my borders because rather than count, you know, the 78 or whatever stitches it is wide and then potentially being wrong, <laughs> or just having to like quadruple count and just being annoying. Um, I just keep extending my borders and then filling in and extending my borders and filling in. And so now I'm going to put this B in and I'll know exactly where I need to turn the corner on my border for it to all line up. Um, so that's why you see some little strings hanging because that's how I like to do those just long straight borders where it just be annoying to count basically. Um, when it's a border that has like little berries and buds, like you can count by those rather than um, having to count just a long horizontal line. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, there is my start on my little ruler freebie. And I just think it's adorable. Um, I'm stitching this on 36 count light mocha Zweigert linen. And I just am using a mix of my own fancy flosses and DMC that I just pulled out of my stash. I think she calls for some silks and has a DMC conversion, but I just pick colors that I love. So that's Believe. Next up, I worked on my Blue Flower Wildflowers pattern. Still obsessed. Love it. Um, I only worked on this maybe a day or two this week, but um, it is one I definitely want to get finished in spring. Um, so I have a feeling I'll definitely keep working this over the next month or two um, until it's done. So here is where I'm at. Um, yeah. So I finished the right half of the pattern, except for a little bit on the bottom. And then I have started, um, I filled the first text line in and have started bringing um, the leafy or the vine um around so I can start filling in all of the gorgeous flowers on this side. So, oh, <laughs> I absolutely love this. Um, I am stitching it on 40 count Weeks Dye Works parchment on this Weigert base, and I am using all of the called for DMC colors. Mm. <laughs> Thumbnail. Um, just kidding. <laughs> I love this so much. And I'm excited to see like the full width of it over here. So I want to start working on those flowers and get it looking as colorful and pretty on this side as it is on this side. And yeah, I just love it. And I also I'm a person who really likes text. Like I like stitching letters. And so it's a really good mix of going from these big, pretty floral, you know, motifs. Um, and then just, you know, putting in a thread to get another word in or something and feeling like, you know, you're really making progress. So I don't know, it's a really fun stitch. And I have seen on Instagram, um, I think a lot of you 
um, are kidding this one up or about to start it. And that's exciting. It's so fun. I love it. So that's wildflowers. So the last thing that I cross-stitched this week was Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. Another spring floral stitch that I just had to bust out. Um, after talking about so much spring stitching last week, I was like, why am I not working on a joyous day? So um, yeah, I pulled that out this week and it's gorgeous and I love it. And <laughs> I am now two thirds complete. Um, I basically had uh, the way the chart's broken up a page finish because half the chart or not half two thirds of the chart is on one page and then you flip and then you have the bottom of the chart. So I finished the top of the chart and here's where she's at. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I finished up that middle section, stitched that big old bird, um, put in all the letters and the Smyrna's, and yeah, I'm so excited. The only thing in the middle that I didn't do was over the house, and that is the over one stitching, which on the chart calls for it to say, oh, joyous day, and then a set of initials, and then a date. So it's like a wedding sampler. It was, I think, Barbara Alma's son. Um, they were getting married, and it was their wedding sampler. So um, I think I mentioned this a few videos ago, but what I'm gonna do is stitch, oh, joyous day, Elizabeth Ann, and then June 11 for my birthday. And um, because I just feel like my birthday's in late spring. I think, did I talk about this? Or I, I did, didn't I? Anyways, this is just my sampler and I love it so much. <laughs> and I'm putting me in the sampler. This one's for me. <laughs> I mean, they're all for me, but you know. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm gonna, I've got a little bit of charting to do in terms of my name and birthday. So um, I'm going to save the over one stitching for the end because there's really not much of it. So it won't be something that lingers at the end if I don't do it now. Um, yeah. So that's a joyous day. Oh, wait, I guess I should mention I'm stitching this on the called for 36 count legacy by picture this plus with all of the over dyed threads, no subs. The only sub I made is I didn't do the satin stitches um, in the triangle borders at the top. Um, I just did those as full crosses instead of uh, satin stitches. I have noticed for myself that um, when I'm stitching with one strand of floss, which is what I do most of the time, Sat I can do satin stitches on 40 count and make them look nice, but I am not good at doing satin stitches on 36 count with one strand and making them look nice. So <laughs> I just subbed it in, subbed in the little, um, you know, cross stitch pyramids, you know, <laughs> rather than trying to satin stitch them because they just weren't looking good. So I was like, nope, I'm not messing with it. Um, yeah, so it's the only sub I made on that one. Okay, so that was the cross stitch. So now let me talk about um, a little bit of quilting that I did this week. So I think I mentioned something hilarious last week, like I'll just do the sashing and then I'll start putting the quilt top together. <laughs> um, kind of forgetting that the sashing involves multiple pieces sewn together and then the cornerstones are nine patches and they're only three inches big. So they're small and fiddly. <laughs> so I was like, can't just whip out this sashing in no time. It's like making a whole other small quilt. So <laughs> um, I did complete all of my cornerstones. I needed 42 of these little three inch nine patches. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> so I did get all of these done. And then I started working on my sashing strips, which are two pieces of the background fabric and one of this red floral that I picked out for um, my sashing. And so I have got a stack of these, but still have like 75% of these to make. Um, and then I did get all of the, oh, I just, my pretty stack, I just dropped it all over the table. <laughs> I so get the dropsies whenever I'm filming because I get too excited. <laughs> Anyways, um, I got those done. So I'm very proud of that. But hopefully this week, I will actually finish making 
all of these pieces and we'll actually get to start assembling the quilt top. That's the new goal for this week. Um, I am going to insert a picture here of me um, kind of playing around with uh, the few pieces that I had ready to go just because I wanted to start seeing what the sashing and cornerstones are going to look like with the quilt blocks. So um, it's just a poorly photographed at night picture but I'll put it in here for fun so you can see um, what it's starting to look like and yeah I'm very excited. So I want to get this quilt top done and then I want to work on my Americana sampler quilts and get that one done and uh, Lori Holt and Christy from Crosshatch Quilts are trying to tempt me um, into joining the red and white sampler quilt um, sew along that Lori is doing on her blog. Oh, it's so cute, but I have so many quilts in progress. I don't know. I haven't committed yet, but seeing everybody posting those blocks on Instagram has made me want to join in. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but yes, that is the quilting that I got up to this week. Okay, so let's talk about some haul that I got this week um, and last week because somehow, um, as several of you pointed out, I held up my traditional stitches order in my Blackbird Designs exclusive and was like, let me take it out to show you and then didn't show you. So that was rude of me. Um, I just somehow deleted that little clip of me showing you guys. So here it is. <laughs> I got the Blackbird Designs exclusive for traditional stitches and it is What Remains. And it is this gorgeous, gorgeous sampler. And one of the reasons that I pulled out Oh Joyous Day this week is because I have made a rule for myself that I am not allowed to start this until I finish Oh Joyous Day. Because I actually have a lot of Blackbird Sampler whips. Well, I say a lot, maybe only three. Anyways, um, and I really want Oh Joyous Day done and I don't want to get distracted, but I cannot wait to stitch this. So Oh Joyous Day, you're getting done because I need to start on this. <laughs> So I chose the option with fabric and overdyed threads. So I got the 36 count straw by Weeks Dye Works. Um, I did mention um, in my Instagram stories when I showed this off that I was sure I got the old Weeks rather than the new, but I did email um, Janice at Traditional Stitches and she assures me this is the week, the Swigert base that I had ordered. So she was like, I personally hand cut everything from a special bolt. And I was like, okay, it just feels softer to me than other Swigert base, but it's gorgeous. It's perfect color. Um, so I got the fabric and I got the, um, uh, over dyed cotton. So they had a silk option and an overdyed option. And I got the overdyeds. So yes, that was my traditional stitches haul. Um, this pattern I believe is, is just available just as a chart to buy from traditional stitches. Um, I don't know if you can buy all the supplies right now because they're um, sending out all the pre-orders of people who ordered all the like, you know, kits and stuff. So, but yeah, go check out, I'll link traditional stitches down below if you want to um, look at this chart because that's the only place you can buy it. Okay, and then I only got one other package in this week. Restraint, look at me. <laughs> um, I got an order from the Tinsmith's wife from Wendy, and uh, I got my Souvenirs of Summer Blackbird book, which I am so excited about. Um, the, the chart that I am wanting to stitch first, and I will at some point this summer, is this one. Is that too shiny? No, there you go. I love this one so much. I think I first saw it on Carol Saltbox Stitcher's channel. I believe it was Carol. It might have been Brenda and Laura where Brenda had stitched it. I mean, I know Brenda has stitched it, but I might have already seen it by then. But anyways, I love it. And then I was like, oh, it's out of print. Dang. Um, and then when I noticed that Blackbird was re-releasing things, I was like, I'm just going to hang tight. And at some point they're going to release that and, or I'll find a way to get a copy of that chart. <laughs> I'm trying to find the name of it. Um, patriotic bouquet. No. Summer Jubilee. Yes. Um, it's on the back here too. Actually, you can see all the designs that are included here on the back. 
and this one is Summer Jubilee. And you know what? I might already have fabric. I wonder what it calls for. It calls for 18th century Blackbird linen. And I have some of that because I bought a fat quarter from Kitten Stitcher. Um, and I only needed a small piece for a design. I haven't started it yet. I just kitted up the, the small piece. And probably sitting right over there somewhere. Um, and I actually recently sent Kathleen from Situation Normal a piece of it because she wanted to do that same stitch. Uh, um, it's like a Halloween small. I'm sure she'll show it at some point. Um, but I have the whole rest of that fat quarter and I know that I will be able to fit my Summer Jubilee. Oh, that's so exciting. I was just like, oh, I bet that's, you know, close enough in color, but it's the exact right fabric. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Yeah. Anyways, I got my Souvenirs of Summer book and I'm very excited about it, clearly. <laughs> and then, oh, even more exciting. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say more exciting, but I was real thrilled. Um, I got this shiny plastic bag. I'll take stuff out and I won't delete the clip. I'm not even going to pause. I'm going to talk to you as I open this so I have no reason to edit this clip. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, I'm in a real mood today. Real mood. Um, so I had shown you that I had ordered the blue flower. Um, the Tudor B. Tudor B. Oh my god. It's so cute. And I've seen so many people stitching this on Instagram. And I want to start it. But again, I have set a rule for myself that I am not allowed to start this blue flower chart until I finish wildflowers. And gosh, that one's big. <laughs> So it's going to be a few weeks before I can start this for sure. Maybe longer. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but Wendy over at Tinsmith's Wife was offering up kits of all the supplies needed. And so, oh, yeah, I snatched one up. Um, let's see if I can show this. Oh, look at those beautiful NPI colors. So I got all the silk colors. And then I got the 40 count color and cotton fennel seed. And this is a fat eighth of fennel seed. I've never worked with color and cotton. Um, it feels lovely. It feels great, honestly. I can't wait to stitch on this. Um, yes, also, Wendy, are you carrying more color and cotton colors now? Because there's some others that I've seen people stitching on that are really pretty. So, you know, might need some more of that. <laughs> um, and then uh, the trim, the um, chenille trim from Lady Dots. It's in the color Barn Door. And so that goes on the edge of the pillow when you finish it. And then the backing is Velveteen from Lady Dot Creates in Shallot. So, yeah, I've got all of my supplies and... I want to start it right now. <laughs> of course. I posted on Instagram this week when this came in because I was just like too excited. And so I, you know, I took a little video of all the supplies and I was like, somebody tell me <laughs> how to not start this right now. And so many of you were like, just start it. And I was like, guys, that's not helpful. <laughs> ah, I just, I want to start it. But I'm trying to be good and like, stick to some sort of rough guidelines on trying to get a couple things done before I start this. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see when that gets started. <laughs> I got one lovely piece of happy mail this week from, well, uh, uh, she, does, she wants to remain anonymous, which is totally fine. She knows who she is. I've already thanked her personally, but I just also want to say publicly, Thank you. She sent me a Tinsmith's Wife gift card and it's so appreciated and will get used immediately, probably on some more color and cotton fabric. So thank you. Um, yeah, so that was all of the mail for this week. And let's talk about giveaway. I had some charts up for grabs last week. So let me grab those and announce some winners. Okay, so first giveaway was Goat Load by Plum Street Samplers, which is just the best name. <laughs> um, and this one goes to Deb Anderson. Congratulations, Deb. Um, anybody who wins, just email me at the link below and um, tell me where you want me to send your chart. <laughs> 
And the next winner was for Sheep Peep. Sheep Peep. So cute. I really do love the colors on this one. Um, and Sheep Peep goes to Karen Jameson. Karen, congratulations. And then next up was the lovely Mouton charts. So all four of these charts are going to Laura Kelly. Laura Kelly, congratulations. So send me an email and I will get all of your giveaways out to you guys. Okay, I think that's all I've got to talk about this week. Um, you know what? It's not. <laughs> I should have done this at the beginning. I'm doing it at the end. I hope the woman who, who asked the question is sticking around to the end. Or should I insert this at the beginning? No, it doesn't matter. I'll leave it at the end. It's fine. Um, I did have a really good question on, or one that has come up a couple of times, and I was like, let me just show it, um, about how I organize, like, my spreadsheet of whips, like, how I keep track of my whips and my new starts and my finishes and all of that. And um, while I love, absolutely love those journals that everybody uses and stickers up um, for um, keeping track of their cross-stitch progress, I, I just need a digital, sortable, you know, reportable <laughs> um, format. I love, okay, so background about me is that I used to run an Etsy shop and I made stickers for planners. Um, <laughs> if you dig deep enough in my Instagram, you'll find it. So back in like 2015, I don't know if it was in 2016, I think 2014, 2015, um, I ran an Etsy shop selling planner stickers and I used the planners and I loved it. And for day to day, like to do list appointments, like things I needed to get done, that system worked great. But for cross stitch, I just haven't been able to make that work as well. I prefer like digital um, planning for my cross stitch. So um, I'll probably insert a screenshot of how I set up my um, spreadsheet. But basically what I do is I just have an active whips list. And I include when I started it, um, pattern name and designer, fabric color and maker, um, the floss I'm using. Um, I don't list every single floss. I just do called for or conversion, like, you know, um, so that I know if I'm using everything called for or if I'm mixing it up. And then I just have like notes to myself. And then when it's finished, I move all that information onto a finishes worksheet and the finishes are sorted by year. So like I have a 2020, 2021, um, you know, et cetera, finishes tab. And so then I'll add a finished date. So I'll have like the start and the end date of when I stitch that project. And um, then my last tab is something I created just for YouTube, just for FlossTube, which is where I put all of the projects I'm working on that week and so I go grab them from the active whips list and plug it in on that little spreadsheet and that way I can just copy and paste into my YouTube description box so I can let you guys um, be able to see at a glance my project name like the chart name the fabric I'm using the floss I'm using um, stuff like that so that way you know if I forget to mention it in a video or if you just want a quick you know, you don't want to have to go back and rewatch my video. You could just click in and be like, what was she using on that? Um, so I do that just to facilitate, you know, questions um, on my floss tube videos. So yeah, I haven't done the level of tracking that like Nicole's Needlework showed off where it's like every piece of fabric I have is in a spreadsheet, all the flosses, like I just, I haven't found a use case yet for why I would want to do that level of tracking. Um, I do have a lot of fabric, but it all fits in these two bins. And so they're pretty easy to just rifle through when I'm looking for something. So I don't know. So I don't really keep track of my floss and my fabric um, on that spreadsheet. That's just more of what am I working on and what have I completed? So I think actually I can pull it up and tell you pretty easily. What is my total <laughs> whips at right now? I'm at 37 active whips. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. I, um, I was at 36, but I started that ruler. <laughs> That's number 37. That one will get finished quick, but you know, um, yeah. 
and that's why I'm putting rules in place for myself like finish this before you start that. We'll see how well I stick to them but I really do want some of these older projects finished and I just keep distracting myself with new ones so we'll see. We'll see if I if I get better at that or if I just it's like always a constant struggle. I tell myself I don't care, but then I'm like, oh, but I do want that done. And like my, um, what's it called? Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. I have not worked on that in a couple of months and I'm itching to get that one out, except that I have all these spring projects that I really want to see finished. So I'm trying to finish those before I get out my summer stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just too many things. I want to stitch all of the things all of the time and why can't I fit it all in? <laughs> okay. Anyways, I think that's all I've got to talk to you guys about this week. Who knows? I'll probably be editing this and realizing I forgot something else I wanted to mention, but I'll see you next week and we'll talk about it then. Bye guys.